Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how I made this walnut and resin hybrid side table. I made this table for a friend that I served in the Navy with. Thanks for your support, bud. I started off picking up the slab from a friend's mill in San Diego called Made Lumber. I got a pretty big walnut slab because I had a couple table orders uh, simultaneously. Then I brought it home, cut it up, and measured out the dimensions on the table that I wanted. I wanted this table to be 24 inches squared. So here I am marking it all up and getting it ready to cut into pieces. Building these kind of tables is pretty straightforward. You just uh, build a mold that holds the wood and you pour the resin in and cut it up, finish it. Seems pretty simple enough, but actually it's really not that simple. There's a lot of uh, things that can go wrong, which luckily not too many things went wrong while making this video. horse trailer <laughs> anyways there's the mold that I'm talking about I'm just test fitting the piece here and the customer opted in for having the resin down the center so right here I'm cutting out the center of the slab and then I'm gonna flip those two pieces around put them back in the mold and fill it with resin I've made a lot of different kind of tables over the years. A lot of just kind of traditional dining tables, side tables, coffee tables, and uh, a lot of live edge stuff. Mostly do live edge work. These resin tables are really fun, no matter how you think it's gonna look or turn out in the, in the end, it's always different kind of changes on you along the process really important when you're making these tables to get all the dust out of all the cracks and make sure it's real clean so that the resin sticks really well otherwise it can separate from the slab then make sure you seal the live edge otherwise you're gonna get a lot of bubbles you'll see later there's some bubbles that come up but they're pretty easy to take care of especially when it's sealed before uh, doing the floor There's a lot of different resins that you can use. Uh, since I first started doing these kind of tables, there's been a lot of different companies that have come up. Um, you can buy it pretty much anywhere online or a lot of different stores carry it. I'm using Total Boat for this project. Uh, it's not sponsored or anything like that. I just decided to go with them. I've been liking their resin lately. And I prefer to use uh, powdered pigments uh, this is a type of mica, it's kind of what they use in the makeup industry for eyeshadow and stuff like that. Gives it a really cool effect. Uh, mix it up real good. I did hit it with the drill for a little bit and spun it around, but here I'm just showing you the hand mixing. And the resin I use for this is a tabletop resin, so you can't do a really deep, thick pour. There is a thick pour resin, it takes a really long time to set up and the pigments kind of react differently when you're using that resin. I like the effect that I get from using this type and doing multiple pours to build it up. Here's the fun part. Everybody seems to like. After pouring it, I swirl the resin around for a bit and kind of get it to where I think it looks cool. It does kind of settle after a while uh, during the curing process, but you just kind of swirl it again and it'll look cool. Then to pop all the little bubbles that rise up, you just hit it with a torch and or you could use a heat gun. And after it cures, sand the top of it 
clean all the dust off and you can do another pour. Demolding is pretty easy when you use this uh, tuck tape. I do silicone the seams before I tape it up and luckily on this one I didn't get any leaks and it came out pretty easy. I didn't show it in this video but there were screws that were holding all the sides together to the bottom. Just take those screws out and then demold it. So since the pandemic, I uh, kind of took a couple years off, moved from my home in San Diego, moved out here to the desert and I'm crashing with mom, trying to find a new place. Things have been pretty hard. Just started the business back up again this year and this table along with another one I'm making at the same time were my first two orders that kind of jump-started the business again so just wanted to say thanks to my customer one more time really really appreciate it things are uh, starting to shape up I'm currently trying to get a new house and a new shop and get this business going full-time again so all the supports really appreciated. If you haven't already, please like and uh, subscribe to this channel and share it. <laughs> Anyways, I always feel weird asking that. All right, we got the tabletop out of the mold and it's ready to take over to the router sled and start flattening it. So let's go do that. This part of the process is pretty fun. It's a little nerve wracking. Um, sometimes the router can jump on you and scare the crap out of you. But I've never had a really any accidents. I always glove up, wear long sleeves, wear a face shield because uh, chips of resin go flying all over the place. I was doing this in short sleeves the other day and afterwards I looked at my forearms and they were all scratched up and had little shards of resin stuck in my skin. So definitely uh, armor up for this task. I'll fast forward it here because uh, it took quite a while. This process definitely makes a lot of dust. <laughs> but what can you do? I like to give these tables a simple round over edge on the top and a 45 degree bevel on the bottom. Unless the customer wants a different profile, this is kind of my standard. can't really tell in these videos how long all this stuff really actually takes. This table I started in June and it wasn't delivered until August. During that time I uh, just take care of my son and things around the house. I'm a single dad. I have a autistic son and I homeschool him. So, my schedule is pretty busy around doing all this woodworking, but get it done. Here's the 45 degree bevel on the bottom. My trim router is kind of struggling with this, but it made it through all right. Like that little rigid trim router. After getting it all cut and routered on the edges, I start sanding. Start out with 100 grit, work my way up to 220. And after sanding, I'll go through and dig out all the little worm holes and imperfections. Sometimes there's some little bubbles that get full of dust and uh, just blow those out. 
then I'll fill them all with resin before doing the uh, final top coat over the whole piece. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Uh, I see a lot of people use syringes and stuff, but I just don't like forking out the money for that stuff. So I just fill it in and use a popsicle stick to kind of push it down in there. Sometimes I'll cut off a little sharp point to get into smaller holes. Then hit it with the torch, let it cure, and finish sand it a little bit more before the final finished coat goes on. Before putting the top coat on, make sure you wipe all the dust off and make it nice and clean. I saw this little flip cup method on Instagram, I can't remember who I saw do it. But I tried it out and it's kind of cool. I noticed that doing this reduces the amount of bubbles and kind of spreads the coat a little more evenly. Uh, overall, I think it's just kind of a trendy, cool effect. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, I spread it all out, let it cure, uh, obviously hit it with the torch to pop any bubbles, and then I'll lightly sand it and make it all nice and even and smooth before putting another coat on. Before I finish the bottom, uh, you definitely want to do the top and the bottom, otherwise the uh, piece will start getting warped on you when the resin cures. But before I put the finish on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and sign the piece and date it. And uh, I always do that to all the pieces I make. You guys might have seen the car in the background. That's a 1961 two-door Ford Falcon wagon. This is my first car my, uh, my aunt got for me. I drove it all through high school and a couple years after high school and when I left for the Navy I put it in storage here in my mom's garage where it's been slowly rotting away in the desert heat and last year I began working on it with my son he uh, helped me take every single component out of the engine bay and he undid all the bolts and stuff himself under supervision of course but it's been a pretty fun father-son project we got it all stripped down to bare metal in the engine compartment and the whole front clip and we're getting ready to paint it now i did rebuild it an engine that was in it it's a 200 straight six and uh we'll be getting that put in here pretty soon anyways it'd be fun to get that thing back on the road I'll probably post a video about it sometime in the near future. So after getting this tabletop sanded and nice and even, uh, it's ready for the final coat. And uh, this top coat will fill in all the little like ripples and stuff that are left over from the first coat and make the top really nice and even. I'll uh, repeat that whole process of sanding and stuff after this coat cures and then do one more top coat and then the piece will be done. After getting the resin spread out throughout the center, I begin kind of letting it drip over the edge. And I usually just use my hands with the gloves to spread it around the edges and smooth it all out. Once that coat's done and cured, um, it's pretty much finished. Uh, I see a lot of people just kind of let pieces go after this stage. But I like to go over it with uh, wet sanding paper and just get all the little imperfections out, make it super, super smooth. And if you, at this stage, if you hit it with a sander, you'll kind of burn through that uh, top coat layer and just kind of end up back where you started before that. Uh, doing it lightly by hand is always better. After wet sanding it, dry it all off. Um, 
I hit it with a little bit of steel wool, get all the dust off, and then this is the final glass coat going on. Same process, just pour it all around, spread it out, hit it with the torch, and call it good. I'm actually doing this on top of the uh, engine bay of the Falcon. I just put a piece of wood over it. Then I set up this painter plastic wall around the whole perimeter, taped it to the ceiling, and just uh, used some weights on the floor. And I set up a fan blowing out one corner, kind of create a negative airflow effect, uh, just to make sure that there's no dust in here. Because my garage is super dusty, and uh, actually I think while I was doing this, my mom was doing laundry. There's dryer lint flying around. So that's always a challenge. At my old shop, I always uh, cleaned really well and I had dust collection and stuff like that. And I would do these resin top coats thinking everything was good and then come back the next day later and find a piece of dust. And it would just really piss me off. So. Now I take the extra time to do this and make the dust-free zone. So there you saw me kind of chopping it up. It works really well to even out the coat. And then I hit it with the brush to smooth it all out. Um, these little brushes work good. Unfortunately, I didn't have a bigger one at the time of making this video. And I just had to do, deal with it. Um, I always prep my brushes before doing this. I put some super glue around the base and kind of crimp down a little tighter. And that will help prevent any of the uh, brush fibers from coming out and getting in the resin. It's always a pain in the butt to work with. As you can see there in the background, there is the uh, other table I'm working on too. My customer wanted hairpin legs and he chose the uh, black finished ones. So here I'm just putting them on the bottom and marking out where to drill for the screws. They're pretty easy to install, just uh, make sure you don't drill all the way through. I am using a countersink here, but I'm not countersinking, I'm just kind of using it as a depth stop, depth stop guide. And I always do the screws by hand. Uh, I've done it with the drill before and uh, a lot of times the screws will break <laughs> so didn't want that happening on this project. I like to use this system from Novus. Um, it's kind of a it's a plastic polish and the way you use it is you just spray it with some water and they have different numbers for uh, different amount of scratches. Since this is a pretty glossy top coat, I'm just using the fine scratch remover. And you just pour it on, rub it in, and kind of buff it out, rub pretty firmly. What this does is it kind of cuts the top layer down and polishes it. And the major difference is in the slickness of the final piece afterwards. Uh, the resin itself, will kind of have resistance or tackiness when you rub your fingers across it but after using this plastic polish it'll be really glassy smooth and uh, it does make it a lot shinier as well after buffing in the polish just uh, spray it with a little bit of water and wipe it all off with a clean rag i like to use these little blue shop towels um, they work pretty well After getting all the polish off, you use this stuff called Clean and Shine. And uh, what this stuff does is it cleans it, shines it up, and it also reduces the static. Uh, because epoxy is a plastic, it does kind of get staticky. So use this stuff and there won't be any static. Dust won't get stuck to your piece. It's real simple to use, you just spray it on and then wipe it off. Alright, so this piece is done and I just set up a board for some pictures and some glamour shots. So here you go.
Thanks for watching, guys. So here we are, uh, getting ready to deliver the piece. I took my son with me for the delivery. Um, my son's mom lives down in San Diego and it just so happened that my, this customer lives in San Diego. So it worked out perfect with uh, timing on the time that I was taking him to his mom's house for delivery. So here we go, here's it delivered. That's my buddy. Anyways, thanks for uh, supporting me and commissioning this piece. Please uh, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys next time.